Why are people so attracted to the image of the log cabin in the woods? Is it an innate, powerful draw back to nature and natural materials? Or is it that the log cabin is a symbol of the simple life, a life free from modern stress, noise pollution, overpopulation, crushing debt, and information overload? For me, it's the thought of working for decades at a job that does not make me happy. Disconnected from nature, surrounded by concrete, buildings, and too many people, and dependent on an employer, the government, the system, and powerful and efficient but noisy and unnatural machines. When I was 21, I was already tired of society and wanted badly to move off-grid, to live off the land, and to live on my own terms. Fortunately, a couple of years earlier, I had earned and saved enough money working in construction during summer breaks to buy some cheap land with help from my parents. The property consisted of five acres in central Ontario, Canada, directly across from a lake and surrounded by public land. I thought I could easily live off that land, supplemented with a large stockpile of oatmeal, rice and canned vegetables. Unfortunately, I didn't last a year. The township started harassing me to remove the trailer that I was living in while building the cabin and I had to get a job to pay the property taxes. I couldn't believe it. I own the land, why couldn't I build a cabin or live in a trailer or a tent for that matter? It didn't make sense, but when I looked into it further, I found out that that was the way it is in most of Ontario and throughout the US and Canada. 25 years after building that first cabin, things have only gotten worse. Land prices have skyrocketed while wages have stagnated. Owning a house, especially one with land, may not be an option for my kids and most others in their generation. On top of that, governments have increased rules, regulations and fees. Previously unorganized townships have amalgamated with their neighbours and are no longer safe havens for off-gridders. In Canada, municipalities regulate residential and commercial construction based on the minimum set out by the National Building Code. Some provinces, such as my home province of Ontario, have more restrictive regulations set out in the Ontario Building Code. Municipalities can add further restrictions and regulations, including things like minimum maximum plan view dimensions and heights, setbacks, etc. A standardized development fee is an example of a local intervention. The development fee, which is the right to develop a building in the township, is $10,000 or more in many of the municipalities, including most in Muskoka, so which is central Ontario, and in the townships surrounding the township that I live in. Property taxes are high. Unorganized townships are cheap, just $100 to $200 in our case, including the education and the road portion. So as you know, I'm 47 now. This is the second property. Actually, this is the third property I've owned in my lifetime. And I'm in a position now where I've worked hard over the last uh, 20 years, especially owning my own businesses, that my wife and I were able to buy this property cash. But what if you're not in that position? As I wasn't when I was younger, when I bought my first first two properties, first one I actually bought when I was 17, uh, bought it with some money uh, that I earned working in construction. And then uh, two years later, two and a half years later, I sold that property for two and a half times what I paid for it and bought this second property, the one that I built that first log cabin on. I bought that property with my sister and using a, and and had it mortgaged. So this is exactly the position I was in back then. Uh, so this is going to be relevant what I have to say next. So how can someone who's just starting out in life buy a property like this one? Let's use my let's use this current property as an example. So the purchase price was 50,000, which ironically is pretty close to the price of the property I bought when I was 19 that I built that cabin on. So the problem is that banks don't like to uh, finance vacant land. It's harder for them to sell. They can't manage it. They can't rent it out to earn uh, back the lost income if you're to default on the mortgage. So, so most of the time the banks will charge a higher interest rate, but they also want a 50% down payment, which is obviously just not possible for most young people. So in the case of this $50,000 property, they would want a $25,000 uh, down payment, and then they would amortize the remaining 25,000 over up to uh, say 25 years. So there's a couple of things. One thing is I suggest raising at least $5,000 of your own. So save that up, work hard, do, make some sacrifices, do whatever you have to do to raise $5,000 to put down on a mortgage to show the bank and another private lender that you're capable or that you're serious about home ownership and that you're capable of, of saving that kind of money. So the option is to get a co-signer or a second mortgage a uh, private lender, family member, 
or uh, somebody who's willing to finance or give you twenty thousand dollars or lend you twenty five or lend you twenty thousand dollars towards that purchase price. So what you would do is you take that twenty thousand dollars, apply it to the fifty thousand. That brings it down to thirty thousand uh, plus your five thousand that you raise. That's your deposit, and the bank gives you a twenty five thousand dollar mortgage. You're going to pay a higher interest rate than you would if you had a, a house. So your interest rate could be let's say six percent compared to what three and a half percent on a house right now. So if you had a mortgage of of uh, twenty five thousand at six percent and then the private lender family member whoever gives you that second mortgage might charge a higher interest rate say ten percent because it's higher risk they're taking second position to the bank so in the event that you stop making your payments the bank wants to take ownership of that property first they sell it off for whatever they can get and then the balance goes to the second lender the second mortgage position so using those numbers your five thousand dollar deposit twenty thousand dollar loan from a second mortgage holder plus a primary mortgage from a bank. Your payments over 25 years at a combined interest rate of 8%, it's gonna be about $343. If you can reduce that down to 6% by paying off that second mortgage lender and just dealing only with the bank after a few years or some other method to get that interest rate down, the payment goes down to $288 per month, which is actually very reasonable. That's cheaper than you'd pay rent anywhere. So what happens if even that number's out of reach? You can't afford $300 a month, which you should be able to. Um, keeping in mind that you're going to be living in a rural area, there's not as many jobs and not as many ways to earn income, but there is ways to earn income, including things such as YouTube. And I'll get into that in another video. This property, this $50,000 property, is completely paying for itself. And like I said, I'll get into that in a future video, but. Imagine home ownership without having any any out-of-pocket expenses. So here's here's a couple of options for you. This property in an unorganized township has no building restriction, has no building restrictions, no building permit required. There's no primary residence and accessory building permits and all that garbage. You can build as many residences on this land as you deem fit or as you feel like. So on my 20 acres, the 20 acres that my wife and I own. 20 acres um, and it's fairly long property can easily have two or three cabins on that property and they wouldn't even be within sight of each other you can have separate driveways you can come in one driveway and go off in separate ways or just walk in so you imagine let's say let's say three people then so three people get together buy this property you have to come up with fifteen hundred dollars each as a down payment and your monthly payments your and your monthly mortgage payments are like a hundred dollars a month that's like so cheap so reasonable Building the cabin, building these buildings on the property can be done as cheaply as free. And I'll show you how to do that in another video or at very low cost at a minimum. So the cabin I'm building right now, I've decided I am spending some money on it because I'm making it a little bit bigger, a little bit um, nicer than I anticipated originally, but still very cheap. And I, there's lots of things and I'm gonna show you how I could have cut uh, corners or could have accessed cheaper or free materials. So that cabin could have been free. So. That's one option, is to uh, buy a property with other people. Second option, which is even better, because you get into home ownership, or you, because you get into ownership with partners and you have a falling out or something, it's a little bit of a hassle to deal with later. Um, better option is to build second, third, fourth, whatever number of cabins you want on that property and rent them out. You list your cabin on Airbnb, and Cabins of this nature are going going for $150, to $200, in some cases $800 a night for rental. So you imagine two cabins on your property in one or two nights, maybe three nights, you, you can have that mortgage payment paid by the renters. Like I said, tune into the rest of the videos in this cabin series in particular. Learn how to build a cabin cheaply. And you can always start by building one cabin, then as you're there, start building a second and third cabin. You're likely going to need to bring in building materials for that, but like I said, it's going to be paid. When your cost of home ownership, when your monthly costs are so cheap, because first of all, your mortgage is cheap, two, three, four hundred dollars a month. Your property taxes in an unorganized township are like a hundred to two hundred dollars per year, so that's insignificant. You're not connecting to the utilities, so you don't have electricity costs, you don't have a hydro bill, you don't have a water bill. So all of these savings can go towards building that second and third cabin or start saving up money to add those utilities later like we will. So start off with no utilities and then add a, a solar system for, for example for electricity. 
and then you can do a drilled well. Uh, $10,000 get you a drilled well in this area so you can draw fresh water. Uh, it's septic system, nice to have you know, full plumbing in your, in your cabin. Uh, of course there's internet costs and there's uh, cell phone costs and things like that, fuel for your truck. But if your costs are so low, your cost of home ownership, the cost of your house, the cost of your place of living is so cheap, you can earn money in so many ways. And I'm going to get into that in other videos as well, like, like how YouTube, for example, is paying for this property of mine. I'm going to get into uh, how to earn money in a rural setting and show you how this property can not only pay for itself but pay for your complete lifestyle allowing you just to live the life that you want to live so so stay tuned to the next section next section let's get into how exactly my wife and I found this particular property using a few online tools I'm sure sites like this exist in other jurisdictions like the US uh, Australia Europe if you guys could let me know comment below everybody here would really appreciate having these re resources to check out to find this kind of property and to understand the rules and regulations in different areas so i'd really appreciate if you guys could do that it'd be awesome i'll take um, that information i'll give you credit and put it on the, the website as well so we can all refer to this information for for the to help uh, other people get into this lifestyle so uh, like i said stay tuned uh, well, we're going to start by going to realtor.ca and the Crown Land Use Policy Atlas for Ontario, Canada. Well, this is the method my wife and I use. So we went to realtor.ca first. Use the drop down and select vacant land. Any acreage for now, you can fine-tune that later set an upper price limit we set 50,000 for one of our searches and then a hundred thousand and we ended up finding a property for over 50,000 but we were able to get it for 50,000 okay so choose the general area that you're looking for in Ontario for us we want to stay within three or four hours of the GTA and we thought west of Algonquin Park was ideal for us and for anybody who want to visit the property it's a nice area and it's a reasonable distance to drive. And once you get into the upper limits of you know three to four hours away from Toronto, the prices come down. But in particular, these areas across here, just south of Lake Nipissing, and to the west of Nipissing are unorganized townships, or there's a few unorganized townships in that area. So this property here kind of fits the criteria. It's 10 acres, you can see that it's nicely treed. It's a decent road and they provide a lot of information like this map that shows the actual property, the dimensions of it, the shape of it, and it also shows a crown land parcel which is really helpful because it's going to help us in the next segment of what we're doing here. Uh, but when they provide that, that's ideal and it's valuable to have that crown land such, uh, in such close proximity. So anyway, go through the pictures, take a look at it, see if you like it. It says here that it's, uh, what, 13 acres. Ignore the 10 to 49, that's just the category that it falls into. There's a good description here, not every real estate agent does that, but you can see that they talk about the excellent uh, game and hunting for moose, deer, small game. But this in particular, living in an unincorporated township, what are the benefits, such as no building permit required? That's significant, that's exactly what we're looking for. There's a number of criteria we're looking for. Year-round access is one of them, the unincorporated township, for us is um, something we absolutely needed to have and we want to have water on the property as well. This property doesn't show water so we'd want to do some more digging, uh, look into it in more detail. For one thing you can start by looking at the map here which is great but if you click on the satellite icon it'll show you a Google Earth image, satellite image and from that you can see the topography, you can see the uh, type of vegetation you can see the coniferous trees there and then that open brown area since this photo was taken in the winter this uh, image uh, that brown area through there which is actually crown land is hardwoods without the leaves on it so those are likely hemlock spruce and uh, pines down in those other areas so the property you can see goes back to that hardwood ridge in the back and then it shows you all along through this area the access onto this 100 acre parcel of crown land so you can actually actually access that lake in the back uh, 
I would say by the topography there, there's probably a low spot on the property that would have some water in it, but you don't know until you do some digging and that might mean visiting the property. So just take a look at, again, where the property is, specifically geographically in relation to things like the town of Arnstein in this case. So it's great that the realtor provided this map and shows the Crown land parcel, but we want to verify that using another source, and that source is the Crown Land Atlas, the Crown Land Use Policy Atlas for Ontario. So if you click on that, just click on the blue button here, that's going to take us to this site, just accept that, that um, I'll show you the legend in a minute, but this is the Crown Land designate. this is the land use policy for Ontario. So it shows you what the land is and what it is de designated for. All the gray areas are private property. We can see here in the legend. So click on that legend, take a look at it. Pri primary land use area. So orange is an enhanced management area, uh, forest reserve. All of those are crown land or public land designations, but the general use area is what we're looking for. And all of that general use area is crown or public land that anybody can use. So in this case, you can see just uh, in northwest of Arnstein, which is where that property is located, it shows that 100 acre parcel just north of the property and that the back corner of the property for sale backs onto that so you can access it. So that's got some advantages. It's not significant, it's only 100 acre parcel. So we wanna see what else is in the general area so that if we wanna hunt this land or, or explore this land in more detail, how much public land do we have access to? And you can see outside of all the gray areas, there's quite a bit in the area, but it's hard to access. So it's a good property, it's not ideal, we wanted more crown land uh, directly accessible from our property, so we ended up with something different. But I'll get into that in, in another video. For now, that's how you use these two resources, and that's how we found the property that we bought. So if you have any questions, just uh, comment below, and I'll get back to you. Up at the cabin right now, just about to get started for the day. It's about 8 o'clock in the morning, and I uh, just had some thoughts that I wanted to get off my chest uh, before I got to work. Uh, talking to uh, talking to some family members on the weekend, just a reminder of why I do this and why I think self-reliance is so important, especially for you young guys out there. So I have three sisters. I'm in my mid-40s now, and my oldest sister is 52, I guess, this year. I'm just disappointed in the quality of the men that they've attracted in their lives over the years and they're not offering my sisters much in the way of of manliness and and uh, and happiness. You know everybody needs love in their life. Everybody needs to be loved and everybody needs to love. You know it's important that we have somebody that's good for us and that we're good for. And you know I talk about self-reliance a lot and of course my brand is my self-reliance and I think that might be confusing to some people, and I think self-reliance means that, at least from my perspective, they think that means it's just my self-reliance, and self-reliance is about being alone, being independent, and not needing anybody, but that's not true at all. Self-reliance is, is uh, just the ability to do things, get things done on your own, 
and not depend on other people. There's a big difference between cooperation and dependence. And if, when you're self-reliant, when you're strong and capable and proficient and efficient, you get things done, you can take care of yourself, you're less of a burden on other people. And that confidence that you gain from being self-reliant and for not depending on somebody else gives you the ability to concentrate or to to become a better person yourself. And I'm talking about my sisters, of course, but that goes for anybody and any anybody in your life, whether you're a woman or a man, the significant other in your life. To some degree, their happiness depends on you and your happiness depends on them. Now, the only way, now the best way to be in a good relationship is to be a good person yourself. And to be a good person yourself, you need to be confident, you need to be, you need to have something to offer. I have an 18 year old daughter and a just about 17 year old daughter and they're at that age where they have a lot, we have a lot of boys hanging around and my oldest daughter has a, um, a long-term boyfriend and, and whether it's this guy or the next or another guy and my youngest daughter, whatever guy's into his life, I want these people to be independent. I want these men to be men. I want these guys to be men. They need to be able to take care of themselves. They need to be able to take care of my daughters. And that takes self-sufficiency, independence, self-reliance, Get out there, do things, learn to do things, become a man, uh, be confident in what you're doing, be confident in yourself, be happy, and concentrating on your own happiness allows you to be a better person for the other people in your life. So, like I said, I talk about uh, my self-reliance, but my self-reliance just means that I'm capable of doing these things, like build this cabin that I'm here doing right now. Do all of these things that make me a better man, but they also make me a better person and a better and a better spouse, and a better, better father, and a better, and a better son, and a better brother. So, I'm just putting it out there, guys. If you're a younger guy, especially, you need to be the best man that you can be. And if you're the best man that you can be, then you have a lot more to offer my daughter, my sisters, my my mother, and every other woman in my life, and every woman in your life. So that's that's what to me self reliance is about. That's what my self reliance is about. It's about me getting out there, me doing my things, and then. When I'm not a burden on other people because I'm responsible for my own happiness and my own survival, and they don't have to worry about me. They don't have to worry about providing these things to me because I can do it on my own. To me, the worst thing you can be is dependent on other people for your happiness or dependent on other people for your survival, dependent on the government for your income or for your, for your uh, medical benefits your, or for your health or for your, your money. You need to get out there and you need to earn these things yourself. You need to work hard. You need to get up early, you need to stay off drugs and alcohol, you need to eat healthy, you need to get lots of sleep. You need to be a man, you need to get up and you need to do things, you need to accomplish things in your life. And you need to get out there and make a difference in society and in the lives of the people around you. And that's going to make you a better man and it's going to make you a happier person. Um, that's what I have to say today, guys. It's, uh, uh, like I said, three sisters, a great wife and, you know, I have a great marriage and the reason I have a great marriage is because I don't count on my wife for my happiness. I can do all of these things that make me feel like a man, make me feel confident. And I don't care if you think that's a bad thing that you need to do things to make yourself feel like a man. Of course you do. You have to be a man to, to feel like a man. So that's what I do and as a result I have a fantastic marriage. My wife loves me. I love her. I attracted a good woman into my life because I concentrated on making me a better person first. Before I met my wife, I'd already built a cabin, already lived in the woods for, for three months. So I'd already done a lot of independent things. I'd always I'd made things with my hands. I'd, I had become somewhat self-reliant for a 23-year-old back in the uh, early 90s. And, and uh, as a result, I felt like when I went into a relationship, I could just be that man. I could be that person that I wanted to be. I could be self-sufficient, self-reliant, and make yourself a better man. You'll attract better people in your life. You'll have healthier relationships and you'll be a lot happier. So to me, that's self-reliance. Just had to get that off my chest. Sorry if I offended anybody, but thanks for tuning in, guys. Um, if you like what you're seeing on the channel, I ask you to, to uh, thumbs up and comment. Um, that's what uh, drives the channel. Uh, it's the feedback from you guys. I really appreciate that. And if you haven't subscribed, please subscribe and, and uh, stay tuned. Some exciting things coming up and please let me know what you'd like to see from me. So thanks, uh, so thanks again guys, um, if you're new to the channel, uh, a lot of times at the end of my videos you'll see me rant and rave or 
or just give my philosophy on life. You don't have to watch that. If you're not interested, just turn it off after the, the first part of the show. And if you uh, do want to hear what I have to say, then, then uh, stick around often. You'll find this at the end of the video. So, like I said, thanks again for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.